Hello and welcome, it's your favourite fake internet doctor here. I promised you guys, my subscribers, a couple of weeks ago, if I reached 20,000 subscribers on this platform, that I would give you a full rundown of all the tools and equipment that I use to fix batteries. So here's the video you requested, coming right up. Number one, multimeter. Or in this case you get two for the price of one with two multimeters. I use two of these for a simple reason. Um, I have this one with the modified ends. That's why I keep this one in service. This one's extremely useful. I'll show you why now. If I'm testing a battery when it's inside the casing, these flat ends can slide right in and show me that that's sitting at 17, 18 volts, you know. And this one on the other hand is difficult to get in and I actually have broken the end off this one if you look actually forcing it into these so in order to avoid that I have the spare one which is this little blue one um, I keep this one around for testing the individual banks of cells when you have it out of the pack like that I like it because it's a nice big screen on it these are all sort of dead, uh, they're all dead. But anyway, there's a nice big screen on it. And also it's got something called auto stop. It switches itself off. If I left that on, it would beep to warn me. And then if I ignored that beep, it would beep again and go off after a few minutes. So that saves the battery. We have cordless screwdrivers. I have about three of these wee park side ones. And I have one of these draper ones. And it's useful to have these, keep them as charged up as you can. If one accidentally goes flat, you always have the other one to reach for. These are handy for the small screws. They don't strip the screws, they're not they're not too serious. They don't have a lot of power, but they're they're, they're powerful enough to do the job, I think. No, uh, whatever, you know. Um when I mention them I have to give an honourable mention to something else. This is a Frankenstein machine that I have manufactured myself, that's the details there. NASA still haven't come forward with the right offer for the patent, so I still patent pending with Dr. Left Hand Thread Media, so here you are. I use that for bigger stuff mostly, but it's got its place. I use it every day, I use it for all the tools, you'll see it in all my videos. The Dremel 3000. This has been one of the most useful things ever to come into this doctor's surgery, as I call it. Um, I use it in battery pair for cutting out these little strips. Or, with these attachments, I use it for sanding off the nickel, for spot welding, or easier soldering, you know. PC programmable power supply. This is an adjustable. DC voltage power supply you can plug on if I want to bring something up to like 18 volts for example I can uh, hook on the terminals onto the, the battery and hit the button you know and then it'll try and put the, the voltage up this is a much better way of bringing up a voltage of a low volt battery than the, the thing you see people attaching the wires from another battery this is the way to do it this is the thing to try. It's much safer. It doesn't overheat the cells. It'll bring it up gently and won't cause damage to the existing cells. There's more chance of a cell recovering and staying recovered if you use this. This has been very valuable in this workshop and uh, battery repair because it saved so many batteries that the jumpstart wouldn't have. The Lipro balance charger. It's the Amax B6. It's very, very versatile and very, very useful. Again, programmable, and it's more versatile than the DC power supply. You can do the same thing as you can do with the DC power supply, but it's much more versatile as you can uh, adjust the S, 5S. So, for example, if I had a pack of batteries, like supposing that was full with a 10 on it, and I wanted to charge this bank of cells on the end, this one here, I was lower than the rest, I hooked them on the ends. And I uh, program it to 1S, or if I want to charge these two together, I hook them in the ends of them. And these two, for example, two banks, you go for 2S, 
3S, you know. Again, there's different types of charge. There's discharge, charge, balance, all sorts of things you can do. And you can set the ampage up or down. If you want to charge something a bit slower. 1S, 2S, 3S, 4S, 5S. And it goes to 6S. Most of these batteries are 5S. That's 5 banks of cells in series. But um, an ESA, your flex battery, that's not, um, that's not stacked lithium as a 6S. And the old healthy batteries are success as well. So The primary use that I would have for this device would be recovering a low bank of cells maybe more than one or trying to even up cells in a pack so that the charger recognizes it so because cell imbalance is one of the biggest causes of battery failure out there some people think it's dead cells sometimes it's not sometimes it's just some cells have fell a wee bit too low lower than the rest and if you balance them up they'll last a long time like that very useful item uh, and still on the subject of charging cells, but in this case it's individual cells that are out of the pack Not like the B6 that charges, you can charge them with in the pack, you know These are when you have them out in your hand, out of the pack, and you want to charge them all to the same level Or you want to bring them up from a lower than chargeable voltage and they're still good This These cell chargers will charge both types of cells The 21700 which this is And the 18650s which these are you know, fun fact when we're here, what makes an 18650 and 18650 and what makes a 21700 and 21700? The simple answer is the physical size. They're both of the same voltage. These are physically bigger and as a rule will perform better. Big cells matter, you know, big cells are beautiful. But anyway, how they classify what they call them the 21 the 21 700 is 21 mil across here and the 70 after the 21 is 70 mil across here from here to here and the same is true of this 18 mil across here and 65 mil across here so that's the 1865 and i don't know why the o's in the end but it's there anyway so these chargers will charge these different types of cells successfully I have two. This is my old one, this week four bank one. I've had it for a while. Um put it on here. Put it on the right way. Aye, this is the right way. Anyway. Not only to tell you if you've got a good cell or a bad cell, they tell you what you can uh, adjust the mode. I can tell you the milliamps going on, I can tell you the the resistance. 22 and 26 they're good sales they're actually good quite good resistance if they're much higher than that if they're up 50 60 above 60 is real bad this vc4 plus is my first one that i got um terrific little machine a bit limited in the slots if you have to charge a whole 10 for a pack it takes far too long um very good, got me started in a good foot, but I just had to bite the bullet and buy the VC8 Plus. Much more superior, again, 8 slots. Just a better all-round charger. Both good, both from Xstar. Like all this stuff that I'm showing you today, I will put links in the description and pinned in the comments section. This relatively bizarre looking item to the uninitiated. If you don't know what this is, this is a battery spot welder that I use to connect the cells in a pack like this here. Join them together. These little dots are spot welds, you know. These two probes make the little welds. This thing is something I've been using for about a year and a half, and it's the most commented upon thing on my battery videos. And I have since upgraded. I actually received a newer one the other day. I ordered a new one and it arrived the other day. I haven't had a chance to try it out, but I will show it to you. But, um, you just join nickel strip onto the, you know, mix a wee spark, mix a wee dot. So I thought this one wasn't powerful enough and I moved on to the K-weld. So I'll show you the K-weld now. 
So hold the phone, give the dog a bone. This is the brand new, all singing, all dancing. Hopefully much better. Hopefully it works well for me. K weld, you know. This K weld comes with this battery. I was lucky enough to get this in the kit form made up because sometimes you have to buy this and make it all up, screw it all together. Get you get somebody to make a box or make a box yourself for it. Find the power supply. All the rest. So this is supposed to be all the singing, all dancing battery repair solution that I need. I haven't tried it out yet as it just arrived yesterday, but yeah, I'll keep you posted. Look at the size of those probes, and they've good big changeable ends on them. You can get the ends for them. And when the heat shrunk that, he left a wee gap for me to screw them out, you know. I can see that as being a kind of a hazard. I might have to wear gloves because um, I can imagine those screws getting pretty hot when I've been doing a lot of work with. The funny thing about this K-Weld is you don't usually get them in this form. You don't usually get them fully made up. I was lucky enough to see one on eBay, but I haven't seen one since. So somebody's seen it and asked me where to send them a link. I couldn't because the link's gone. Um, keep your eyes open for a fully made up one or watch later videos and see. You never know. If this isn't up to the, the job, I might have to change the power supply. I know the, I know the welder's up to the job, so I'll keep you posted. This is Nichols trip. What this is used for is when I'm joining the cells together. Um, I use this in conjunction with a spot welder. You can see it in my videos. Um, yep, yeah, I'll also put a link in the description for that as well. Pair of scissors. Item number 10 is just your commonly garden pair of scissors to cut that off at whatever size you want to eat. Get it the right size for what, how far you need to go, what shape you need it to be to join whatever cells you need to join together. Item number 11 is them flush cutters. They are very, very cheap on Amazon. You can buy two for just a few pounds. They're very, very good, very, very useful. I'll show you what I'm using for now. This handy wee tool was recommended to me by a guy from Canada. A guy called Daniel. Daniel keeps me right with a lot of his battery repair stuff because he's been doing it for longer than I've maybe been alive, you know. He's been monkeying around with that stuff a long time. It's just for getting these, uh, these strips off. What I used to do was this. It worked, you know. You're prying with a screwdriver, you know. Not only does it damage the screwdriver, sometimes in the negative side of the cell, you can damage the cell doing that. But um, if you use the flush cutters, for example, get underneath with them, it nicks off these these spot welds, the original spot welds, so easily without doing any damage to the cell. You do risk damage to the cell in the previous way that I was doing it. But that gives you a better surface to re, re spot weld, because I do reuse a lot of cells in my videos. I read. A pack way like six bad cells, you're not gonna fix it, so I maybe put the four onto the VC8 charger and see what resistance they are, and if they're good enough resistance, I'll use them again. Item number 12 the M12 Milwaukee soldering iron. This thing heats up quickly, uh, it doesn't overheat the top, the top will last so long, and once it, it's working temperature, the light stays on green. But if you switch it off, the light will stay red to show you that the top's still warm. It's kind of a safety feature. Very good item. Proper fan favourite on the channel and a proper favourite of mine. I've had this a couple of years now and I just wouldn't do without it. It's my favorite, one of my favourite things in, in the doctor surgery here. And again, I'll link it in the description if you're interested. Item number 13 again, it's two items. It's flux, it's like a no clean flux and a syringe and Ersen multi core, five core flux solder. This is my go to stuff now. I've been using this for oh, maybe a year and a half now. These two things were recommended by one of my good subscribers on YouTube, John Paul. You know, John Paul watches all my live streams when they're going on, you know, he's, he's been very helpful. 
and we're very good with advice and he was a hundred percent right with these this kit is my go-to i just love this stuff and also i'm going to link these as well because i think they are good so moving on to item number 14 it's the box that i keep these things in there's lots of useful items on here but uh, they're for other jobs anyway they keep them this this is an old Doctor Who lunchbox that I found when I was tidying up. I call it the TARDIS. It's uh, time and relative dimensions and soldering. It's been very useful. And seems somehow, see it holds all that stuff quite easily because it seems somehow bigger than inside. Item number 15. Again has two items. There's heat shrink. They wrap these cells. You see if you're... Um, your insulation is damaged in your cell and outside that uh, that sort of stuff. What we do is we put this over the top of it and heat shrink it. And if your end ring insulator, these are the ring insulators. If your ring insulator is damaged, this one's naturally not too bad. You put that over. And for the next part of this procedure, we have to use item number 16. Good old heat gun. I didn't use anything too fancy. I just bought this Draper one. It was reasonably enough priced and it does the job. And the wattage is pretty high. It's an 1800 watt. It's not too bad. So what I do now with this... Um, You see, you don't need anything too fancy, and that's if that had I mean of the insulation or ring insulator had been damaged, and that that's now made that cell hot for purpose, especially good for reusing cells. Another invaluable, perfectly essential item for the workshop. This one that is the most of it, but then another honorable mention before I go, I use these saber cuts, butts, torque spots, and these hackings as well. I bought this hacking set because they go down to T5 and you usually use a T7 or T8 to take the board off a, off a Milwaukee and you use T10 like these to open most of the batteries that are about. So these are essential as well but I'm just going to give them an honourable mention. So I hope you enjoyed that video, that's, that's everything that I have that I would use to fix batteries. I hope I haven't left anything out. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, throw on a comment. Also, if you want to buy anything that's here, I'm going to try and put as many links in the pinned comment section and also in the description. So give us a thumbs up and thanks for 20k guys. Here's to 100k. That's coming soon. I can feel it.